Today I have six fresh lemon DIYs. Keep watching! I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. All right, we're gonna start off with some flower picks. I have yellow and I will also be adding some white, the same. I'm gonna use a variety of yellow ribbon and this checked ribbon with wire and this calendar from July, and this is the Farmer's Market calendar. So this is what that thrift and slime looks like. It's chalkboard on one side and just plain on the other. It had some writing on it. I erased a little bit, and now I'm going back over with some little chipped areas with this furniture marker in black to just cover that up and just freshen the sign up just a bit. Any little scratches, I'll just go back over it like this. No need to use chalk paint because I won't be using this for chalk writing. Next thing we need to do is trim up this sign. So we're going to remove it from the rest of the calendar. Decide how much we're going to need to remove and then start trimming it down. Fortunately, this one has a lot of, it has two rows of the border on it. So conveniently enough, you can just trim right along either one of those if it's the right size you need and it was for me you can use some of those little rounded scissors if you want to to get around those curves it was really not that difficult to do then I'm going to cover this with my glue stick I saw I think it was Sammy from unicorn dust designs that said if you apply your calendars onto a black background that you won't see the lines or the grid on the other side so that is what I have done in this project and she is exactly right so I'm just laying this down gonna smooth it with my hands and then the part you don't see is me smoothing it out with my wooden ruler so I believe I cut that part out accidentally yes there's my ruler laying to the side so once that's all down and you've removed the wrinkles and bubbles you can start taking your picks apart I wanted to have white and yellow because I personally have a lemon tree at my house and the little flowers on here or they're small flowers like this they're not necessarily yellow they're white and it's a pinkish color very fragrant love them love this tree but I thought these flowers would look better because they look a little bit more like what you would see on a lemon tree and of course they coordinate the white and yellow so I'm just going to take these and lay the stems toward each other so that I have a bunch on the left and a bunch on the right. I'm going to move those around in a way that is pleasing to my eye. So you can just push those pieces around, pull them out for longer pieces, and then take a little bit of floor wire or tape or whatever you have and then twist these together in the center. Next we're going to start on the bow and I'm going to use this. I got this at the thrift store, believe it or not. It was a brand new roll. I believe it came from Hobby Lobby. And I'm going to make a six inch tail and then just make a simple bow in my hand. I'm not using my bow maker today. I've got a mess in my scrapbook room. I mean, my scrapbook, oh my goodness. In my crafting area because I'm sorting scrapbook and other supplies. So there is stuff everywhere. And I know it's in the pile somewhere but I'm just not quite sure yet. So I'm just gonna make this two loop bow. These are five inch loops and I'm going to do them on each side so that they're two on each side. One actually I think I made a little bit smaller than the other one, the one that's on top. Bunching them together in the middle and just holding that in that center so that it doesn't come loose and cutting off the excess. Just gonna make sure I have enough for two tails to hang down. Making sure that I didn't pull too hard and change the measurement of my loops there. Then I'm gonna take a pipe cleaner or a chenille stem, whatever you wanna call it. Pull it tightly down in there and then twist it around. Okay, so I wanted to give my that soft 
flowy ribbon a better backing so that I can make it stand up a little bit better. So as I've done before, I'm going to put this silky like ribbon right on top of this burlap. And this was just a scrap that I had, the burlap scrap. I'm not exactly sure what store I got it from, but you can, you know, you can use Dollar Tree ribbon if you want. And I'm just making some little light zigzags down here so that the glue doesn't show too much through this yellow ribbon. And then trying to center it by eye as much as possible through the length of this ribbon. Go all the way down, zigzag very lightly, and then press it down. And then once it's cooled and it is set up, you have this nice wired ribbon. So same thing here. I'm just going to pinch up right where I have my, my six inch tail. I'm going to pinch and twist my ribbon to make my first loop. I'm checking my measurements. So I want this to be the same size as the bow that I already have made. Twisted in the middle because you want that pretty side to be on top. So that's why we twist in the middle. So now I have my little two loop bow to go on top. So there you go for that. You can go ahead and wrap that if you want, but since I have it in my hand, nice and secure, I'm gonna go ahead and add it right onto this black and white bow. I'm just gonna unwrap that by holding it very, very steady, and then twist them both together. I'm gonna to twist them together, spin it around to the back, and put the bulk of that knot, twist, 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 in the back. You can trim that off if you want, but I'm going to use this as part of my hanger on the back. So fluff the bow. You know, this makes a world of difference because what you see when you first put it down is not gonna bring you the joy that it will after you have arranged it purposefully and gotten it ready for presentation. So we're gonna take those tails on the black and white and on the polka dot ribbon and just trim those down and dovetail them. Whoops, see there? Almost did it wrong. You ever do that when you're crafting? You you look at it and you go, what am I, what, 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 what am I doing? I don't know why that gave me so much trouble in that moment. I could have been distracted. Could have just happened. It does happen. Lots of times when I'm crafting, my kids are in the room with me or my husband will come downstairs and I just, I'm so deeply into what I'm doing that the smallest distraction just takes me out of the moment. I forget where I'm at when I go back to it. Oh, scatterbrained. Okay, so now I'm just going to go ahead and use that pipe cleaner to attach it to the floral piece that I have, the floral swag. Fluffing again, moving around, getting it where I want it. I leave these parts in, guys, because it is important that you understand to get the final result you want, you have to take your time and touch every piece of that. I think it was Ramon at home that said you should touch every piece, touch every piece. Like when you're fluffing a Christmas tree, every single piece, every branch, everything has to be touched. Okay, so I'm just twisting it around in the back. You can simply make that into a hanger if you'd like, or I could just hang it with the open area at the top there if I wanted. Okay, so now I'm gonna start adding in the rest of my flowers that I wanna put here so that it covers up this this little blank area, just wanna fill it out. So this is just kind of my little dry run and I just kind of poke them in there and see where I might wanna want them. Want to put them, want to wanna want them. And I, yeah, okay. So I'm just gonna keep adding those in where I want them, like so. Y'all forgive me, I, I really need some more coffee this morning. And I have a variety and I really like these little I really like the airiness of these picks. I was fortunate enough that these did come from Goodwill and I have no idea how much these would have cost me at a craft store, but they're just beautiful. I love them. Love them very much. And these particular picks, both of them had little pieces of fern and, and things like that on them. So that was nice. And the little buds on the ends, little 
like they're just blooming in the springtime. But actually, for me, lemons, you could leave those up the entire summer, which is exactly how I intend to decorate my house for summer. Short of changing it up a little bit for the 4th of July, because we usually do something special for that. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm loving the, the yellow and white this year. We need some brightness. We need some joy. We need some light. It's a new year. I'm healthy. I'm alive. My family is well. Got to move towards some brightness. So here she is, all finished. And I'm giving it a good look, all sides and directions. I'm telling you, pick it up, look at it all over the place, look for spots that need a little extra embellishment, and then fix it up. Do you see the little hole there where the calendar hangs? Up toward the top of your screen now, you can see it. I did go back with a white paint pen or a paint marker and fill that in so that it blends in a little bit better and it doesn't just stand out as a calendar page with a hole in it. All right, for the first one, I'm going to use this sad looking Lazy Susan. I don't know what this is. It's not actually wood, but it's made to look like wood. It's more like a particle board, but it was stained and scuffed and nicked up. It had chunks missing out of it. It was just in a terrible state. But basically, the bones of it, the shape of it, are still in really good condition. So I'm taking my sanding block from Dollar Tree and just sanding this all down, attempting to get as smooth a surface as I can on here. So my idea was to use my chalk paint to cover up everything. I'll show you how that works out. Starts off pretty strong. Looking pretty good. I'm only going over the top. I'm not going to do the base of it or the bottom underside of it. You see those spots? Yeah, it kept bleeding through. I don't know if they were oil spots or what they were, but this wasn't a cutting board, so I'm not sure what that was just kept coming through. So I took it outside and used some spray paint, a high gloss, and just sprayed it. And it did cover it up a little bit better. Good enough for me to do what I have to do next. Now, to take the glossy appearance away, I went back over it with some more of this chalk paint. This is Rust-Oleum and Linen White. Go back over this and let it dry. Then I'm gonna take this framed artwork and I'm just going to pop that picture out. I'm going to use one of my Pyrex bowls to choose my shape. I'm going to put that on top of my sign. And then just with my pencil, I'm going to make a circle that I can cut out. I tried to push it a little bit away from the bowl so that I could get a bigger circle around there. I used a pencil instead of a pen so I wouldn't have any marks and I could clean it up. Now I'm just trimming right to the outside of that line that I drew. Again, so it would be a little bit bigger. You can see my little paper line there. And so that's how it's going to look. And I'm just going back over with my pencil and erasing. The little pencil marks. So now we have to put this down. And I noticed on the picture it has some distressing. So I'm going to do a little distressing of my own here with a little bit of this Waverly antique wax and a chip brush that I got from Dollar Tree. Now distressing items like this is a little bit new to me. I don't usually go this heavy handed, but I wanted to give it a try. I mean, it's just paint, right? You can always go back over it with some white if it's too much. Just smudging in a little bit of it with my fingers. Decide where I want to put it. So I'm going to use my Crafter Spray Glue. Lightly spray it toward the center on the top. And then gently put this down where it looks like it might be close to center. And this, this works very nicely. It doesn't leave any lumps and bumps underneath. 
just going to smooth it out a little bit with this little, I don't even know what this little piece of plastic is. I've had it for a while. I think it's a pumpkin scraper. Isn't it silly what we can use to craft with? Okay, so I'm going back on the top to kind of blend my colors a little bit. Little light bit of that antiquing wax, and I'm just kind of knocking it off there on that piece of cardboard. And then I'm going back around here. My confidence is up a little bit. I'm adding a little bit heavier distressing. And I like it. I think it turned out great. Looks like chippy wood. So that's my Lazy Susan. It matches the rest of my lemon decor. We're going to start off with some floral picks that will match lemons. So white, yellow, green. These are thrifted. This is a leftover piece of styrofoam from something I got from Amazon and got some Target picks and a thrifted pick with lemons. We're going to use this jar. I've already flipped it once and used it for Christmas. I'll link that video for you. But you're just going to wrap the middle section with burlap ribbon. Then you're going to put your plaid on top of it. And I just wrap the top with a little bit of the burlap ribbon as well. I have this ribbon that came from another project also. So we're repurposing a lot today. I'm going to use my metal ruler from Dollar Tree and I'm just going to cut this in half. We're going to trim this up so that it will fit underneath the ribbon that is going around the center of my jar. So I'm just going to cut it down the middle and this works pretty good for that. This is messy, messy foam. If you've got something else to use, you might do something else. Little dots were flying everywhere. So I'm going to trim it down so it'll fit in the center right underneath there. And I can just squeeze that in. You want to get yours. Uh, if you're just doing this for the first time, then you want to be sure that you leave a little bit of room when you hot glue your ribbons, your band there on the back so that you can put a piece of foam in there. Dollar Tree does carry floral foam, so you can use something else there if you want. I wouldn't recommend using the, the very fine one that comes in the plastic because it's going to make a mess when you press on it. So I'm going to just take my lemon pick and cut it down. I'm also going to cut down my greenery pieces. And I'm going to show you two different options for decorating this jar. Now you have to forgive me because the first option, I'm a little bit out of camera range here. A little bit out of view, but you'll get the idea of what I'm doing. I'm just going from the top. Everything is going to be on the top. I have two of these little greenery picks and I'm going to put one on each side and kind of fluff it out. Give it a little body, give it a little life like a real tree. And I'm going to do the same thing with each of these picks. I have even numbers except for my lemons and I have three of those. So I'm just going to place these in where I feel like they look good and stay with me now because in a minute you'll be able to see these. If the picks are too long, not a problem. Just go ahead and cut them off. I just snipped that one while we were, while it was down there on the bottom to get it exactly where I wanted it. I love this little pick with the, it came from a bigger, bigger arrangement or a bigger pick. And I just trimmed it down. I love the fern on there, so pretty. Very spring and summer. Again, just fluffing it out pulling it away so that it's not laying flat. We want it to look like real flowers. We wanted to give it some dimension, so we're gonna make sure that we fluff everything out. So I'm gonna take the second pick that I cut and just put it on this side so you see what I'm doing to the left and to the right, trying to have balance and symmetry on both sides. I'm gonna press the leaves up close to my lemon and then place those down in that foam as well. Can kind of get the idea. Add those in where I like them. So this is option number one. This is what your arrangement will look like if you do it this way. Now on to option number two. Now go ahead and pull these out really quickly and show you how to do the other option. So this is going to be on a slant or a diagonal, and I'm just going to go from the top corner down to the opposite bottom corner. And the weight of these arrangements will be just kind of off to the side. 
So I'm going to use my little white picks there and then my floral picks and kind of have them reflecting each other. Sort of. You can do this whichever way you like it. Whatever is pleasing to you. If you look at it and go, eh, that doesn't look right. Well, then you don't have to do yours that way. You can certainly change it up. This is just to give you inspiration. And you can use whatever colors you want. You could change this out for any type of holiday. You could use strawberry picks instead or blueberries or uh, no berries at all and just use it as floral. So once I get those pieces in, I'm going to go back in with the smaller clippings from those pieces of picks. And I'm just going to add a little hot glue and put those in where I feel like there needs to be a little light. Often with dark green, you'll find that you have little spots that, that look like holes in your arrangement. You can always bring those back to life by adding a bit of bright color. Do you see? Makes a difference, doesn't it? And I am lemon obsessed. I have done so many projects with lemons and I love them. I'm telling you that they will all be displayed in my house. Yes. There's something so cheerful about the yellow. And farmhouse because it's, you got all that white to go with it. You can certainly add more colors to your arrangement if that's something that you like. Don't be afraid to break your picks apart. If you get, if you go to the thrift store or you go to Hobby Lobby or whatever, of course don't pay full price, but if you get it on clearance and you get a good deal, you can take those picks apart. You can clip greenery off that you like. You can save greenery from projects that you use just the florals off of. Just, I don't throw mine away. I have a bucket that just has scraps in it and I just pick my scraps out. Now see that pick on the bottom was missing a leaf. So I just trimmed it down a little, took a leaf off the top that was hiding, it was behind a bunch of stuff, and put it on the bottom. This little piece of fern, I'm actually going to add a little bit of glue so that it will stick down because it was kind of folded and I wanted to be able to see it a little bit better. So just a tiny dot. Be very careful with these plasticky pieces because with hot glue it can sometimes melt them and they'll like snap. So you might want to use cool glue for that. Then we're going to add the bow. You can decide where you want to put it. I kind of like mine right in the middle. So I'm just going to go back over the original glue spot that I had here on this bow. Press it down in the center. This was a quick and easy floral arrangement that makes a huge impact. I think it's very high-end looking, very spring and summer, and so cost-effective. It didn't cost much at all. In fact, everything for this project was already at my house. And you really can't beat that now, can you? I crafted from home. I didn't even have to leave to go get my supplies. Let me know what you think about this project and what you might do differently. I hope you'll give this a try. Summertime, we'll have a lot more options for signs, so keep a lookout for these at Dollar Tree. Let's start off with this that I got from Goodwill. This is a sort of a, I don't know, organizer that you hang on the wall by your door. We're going to give this thing a makeover, and let me tell you, it is extreme, so keep watching. You can easily remove the backing here so you have lots of options and the possibilities are endless. But it does need some cleaning so we're going to get to doing that just using these little antibacterial wipes and just wiping this entire thing down. Front, back, sides, top, around the hardware, every bit of it. It's always important to clean up your items when you get them from a thrift store anyway because you don't know what their previous life was like. And you don't know, you know, what germs you're bringing in. Look at all that dirt. Giving them a fresh start. So a bath is the first part. Then I'm going to use my metal ruler from Dollar Tree and pop out this little, I don't know, it's almost like a wicker insert. Clean that up. And I'll take the back off and the cork board off. Put it to the side. That can be brushed off too if you want to brush it off. I'm going to take a just my regular little screwdriver, I keep in my toolkit over here, and I'll remove this hardware. This makes it so much easier when you are painting an item. Just take the hardware off. Otherwise, you're going to have to paint, you're going to have to tape all around it. 
to keep from getting paint on it and it slows your process down so this makes it a lot quicker those are tiny screws so be sure you put everything together in a bag or a bowl place them to the side and I'm going to use this Rust-Oleum 2x flat white paint I'm going to take it outside and give it two coats I left the black the back of it just plain okay so now it's time to replace that hardware I did clean that off it's black so it's gonna go with pretty much anything I didn't notice any scratches or damage to it but if you like a rust of a rustic or aged farmhouse look then you know rusted pieces would be fine you could also take your hardware and spray paint it any metal color that you like or whatever works in your decor the likelihood of finding a piece identical to this is probably not too high however my channel is about making it my own, so you make it your own. This is for inspiration because I want you to see what a difference just a little bit of extra time and loving care can do to a project. And this piece, I probably paid maybe a dollar and a half. So then you're going to take some fabric. This is also thrifted fabric. Apparently, someone was there was a bunch of remnants of fabric so apparently someone was either maybe making masks or making quilts or crafting with it and I decided it would be great to cover up my little piece of cork board plus I'm totally into lemons if you've been watching my channel you know how I'm obsessed now I'm just picking which part of this image would be the best which one's the best fit and which piece I like the best I'm taking my rotary cutter these things are so sharp and just going down the sides I want to make sure that I have excess on both sides about eh, maybe an inch because I want to wrap it around the back I won't be gluing this down on the front we're still going to use it as a cork board now I'm just going to reload that glue gun and start on the back by adding some glue folding it over and pressing it down Please excuse my nasally voice. My allergies have gone wild. It is full-blown spring here in southern Alabama where I live and my sinuses are getting hit pretty hard so I sound a little strange that's why. Okay you can pull out all those little extra strings on the back if it bothers you but no one's gonna see this. Okay so if you notice when I pop it back in here there's still some space that didn't get covered. And that is so easy to fix. I'm going to use a little bit of ribbon and just trim that out. This is some Christmas ribbon that I had, I think, from Dollar General that I got on clearance. No, maybe Big Lots. I think it was Big Lots. I'm just going to add a little bit of glue on the top to hold that piece in place. sure you leave it longer on the edges so you can wrap it around the back same thing here on the bottom just gonna go all the way to the edge and I think it's a nice detail it looks good with the fabric that I chose and you're just gonna fold this over remember there's gonna be a backing on this so there's no need to finish this out in any way Okay, so there's our court board portion. I'm going to place this in the bottom. I think this gives it a very pretty cottage look. Put the backing back in place. And then press the tabs back down. Now that portion is good to go. Now we're going to work on the top. I got some of these little signs. They were already pre-made and they had like a little hanger on them. I just pulled the little hanger off the staples and I'm going to hot glue this section to the top. I don't need those little open spots nor do I need that wicker looking panel for the back. I thought this would be a great option if you wanted to personalize it with your name or put a particular date that you needed to remember or maybe even a scripture or saying that you enjoy. Now we're going to work on this second panel here in the section in this section and it didn't have any tabs so I'm not sure what was there in the first place we're gonna fix that by measuring it I think this is a four by six 
and I'm just going to trim down some foam cork board which came from Dollar Tree. By the way, you can get pretty fabrics also at Dollar Tree if you're lucky in your craft or square section. You could use an old pillowcase or a sheet or a napkin, piece of a tablecloth, whatever you wanted to use. Just, you know, think outside the box a little bit, make it your own. So once I get that cut down, I'm gonna make sure that it fits, and it does. Now you could leave that white if you wanted to, but I wanna cover it with a coordinating print. So I have some of this that came out of a paper pack from Target, and I got it at Goodwill, I think. And I'm just going to, it's a green, black, and white, kind of a plaid. I'm just gonna measure that out, cut it out, and then glue that down. You could use a glue stick if you want to or just use some dots of hot glue and put that down on your around the edges. And I'm just going to do the top and the bottom. There's no need to cover it in glue. And I'll have a nice flat smooth finished look. I think it looks good with that print that I'm already using. And I've chosen a sticker from a, it's like a dimensional, see there, sticker from Dollar Tree. They have several packs. These are really, really nice quality. And I've used them in projects before. I'm just going to press that down and then using a combination of my scissors to give it a rough cut. And then my, I use manicure scissors for detail scissors. You'll see those here now. I'm going to go in around closer to it and just trim that out. I wanted to give it some dimension and have it stand off of that section just a little bit. So it kind of crushed it down just a little bit when I was cutting with my scissors at the wrong angle. Just went back in with a, a pin and fixed that up. Touched up the little pieces that should have been black that kind of looked white because they were, had a little dent in it. And I just fixed it. A little hot glue, I'm gonna put it in the center matches nicely with the backing there and with the bottom section. Look at that. Perfect. Use a little bit of hot glue in there and hold it down. Of all these thrift flips and Dollar Tree videos and all this craftiness on a budget. I appreciate you so items. Much. You're going to choose some ribbon that you like and some florals. I've got some paper. You can use wrapping paper, decorative paper, whichever you choose. A picture that came from Dollar Tree. Little wall art. Very pretty. It's got lemons on it, so that's the theme we're going to go with. Blue and lemons. I thrifted this frame. It has no glass. It is matted. Now we're going to just take the plastic off of our pretty little wall decor here. And I'm going to remove the glass. You can certainly leave yours in, clean it up if you would like, but I want this to be lightweight and I have children that run through the house, so this is gonna hang up nicely for me without breaking if it falls. So we're gonna take out the mat and we're gonna cover the mat with this paper. This paper originally came from the Target Dollar Spot in the fall section, like a backdrop. I'm going to use my handy dandy glue stick, go all over the back of this, if you get any areas that are too thick just rub those down with your fingertips it'll easily wash off. This is just school glue. Flip it over on your paper and then press it down. You want to press it down firmly on the sides, the corners, and around all of your edges. I'm going to flip it back over, press out, and use your wooden ruler to remove all of the little wrinkles that might be there on your mat. I had a little frustrating moment and had to redo a couple of things earlier so you can see the remnants of paper when I did it on the other side. That's okay, it's a craft and we can always fix our boo-boos. That's what I've done here. We're moving on. I've cut this down to a manageable amount and I am folding over my edges and gluing those down. 
this is easier for me than trying to make a edge here and it's going to be in the frame so you're not going to see any of the boo-boos on the back and you're not going to see any rough edges or anything like that just be sure you don't get it too bulky be sure you curl in your edges there just fold them up over like you're making a package add the glue and press it down and work fairly quickly with that so that your glue doesn't dry before you have a chance to put the paper on it I have a rotary blade here and I'm gonna go from corner to corner right in the middle because you're gonna have two options with this frame I'm gonna show you what it would look like if you used it this way so you're just going to separate this into triangles fold it over add your glue fold the little tip under so it doesn't stick out on the other side and rub that down you're gonna do that on all of the sides of that opening simple right that's easy enough so two choices we can put the frame right on top or we can put it underneath and just take it out of the frame I wanted to show you both options however I have decided that I'm just going to use it on top so I'm going to put my mat back down I'm gonna add the back on this works very easily it just has the little tabs that you turn and it locks into a channel in the sides so this is going to be easy to chain out, change out so that I can use it for another craft and doesn't that look great I love the yellow and the blue this year lemons and blue really popular and of course you can't go wrong with plaid right so I'm going to measure top bottom and both sides to make sure that I am centered here I'm going to use a light pencil marking on each side and the top and bottom so that I can get this glued down and I can put it exactly back where I want it flipping over that frame gonna add my glue put a little heavier spots in the corners a little bit on the sides this is not heavy because there's no glass it's not gonna take a lot to hold this gonna center it back down with my pencil lines and then press it down see how it looks that's nice go back and take the pencil marks off now I'm gonna start with the ribbon that I chose this is a wired white ribbon that's underneath and I wanted to give some body to my Dollar Tree ribbon so I'm just going to layer it on top of a thinner wired ribbon and you'll see me zigzag the glue lightly so that it doesn't show a dark glue line underneath there and it will look like one ribbon instead of like we tacked it together so we're going to do this down the length of our ribbon for as much as we want to use working quickly and being careful not to burn ourselves now I'm going to make two loops one is going to be larger than the other and you can see I've already done that with the glue so here's a bigger loop there's a smaller loop just like that And ideally we will be stacking those on top of each other I have a piece that I'm using for a tail I'm going to put the first bigger loop in the center the smaller loop on top and I'm going to use a piece of this twine that came from Dollar Tree on a big spool we flipped it over centered it and we're going to pull it so that it pinches it in the middle I'm going to do a double knot here you can do more than that and you can add a little hot glue if you'd like for securing it a little bit more you're gonna fluff your bow out just a little open up those loops and then find out where we want to place them I'm gonna remove the extra little pieces of cord that we had and I want mine right in this corner so a little hot glue on the frame and then we're gonna place the bow down in there and hold it for a moment so that it holds down and then I've decided for the tail of this ribbon which I have cut it a slant I want to make it look almost like it's blowing in the wind or it's just kind of floating floating on a summer breeze if you will so I've taken that tail right on the end and then a spot right in the middle well close to the middle where we're making it look like it has some movement 
we're going to do the same thing on this side. So you see, I've just kind of bent it up with my finger. Little dot of glue there. We don't want to go overboard because I like to tear my projects down and then reuse them. I'm going to do the same thing, a little loop, a little dot, and just press the tail down there. Originally, I had a bigger bow that I tried and then a medium bow that I tried, and I just did not just wasn't doing it for me. I feel like the simplicity of this bow is exactly what this picture needs. So I'm just going to take a random little pick with some greenery and place those down here around that bow and on the corner. I think it balances the picture a little better since we have lemons in one corner in the top and one corner in the bottom. Now we have this in the top and a little bit of the little, you know, the bow and the, and the little floral and color up there in the top. So I'm just placing these pieces down where they look good, where I feel like they look good and they make sense. And it's a quick, simple project. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much. We're gonna start with some ribbons, a thinner ribbon and a thicker ribbon. One is wired and this lace ribbon is not, but it's pretty stiff. We're gonna have this sign, this came from Target, and this calendar, the August 2021 Simply Blessed. And it's the graphic from that. You're just gonna remove that from your calendar. When I place that down, I could still see the writing through here. So rather than dragging out the paint and having all that dry time, I just decided to go ahead and use my black furniture repair marker and cover up all of the green on this sign. It's a beautiful green, don't get me wrong, but I wanna cover up the black from the writing and also this will help camouflage the grid from the numbers and the squares on the back of the calendar page. These markers are like a stain marker, but they can be used for so much more than furniture repair. I really recommend that you get them. You can get them at Dollar Tree and you can get them, they're in three packs. And I think there's two varieties of their three packs, a darker color and then the lighter colors. Okay, so all those spaces in the middle will not matter. I'm just gonna press down so I can make some marks on my paper as to where I wanna lay my sign when I am getting ready to glue it. And it looks like that, see it dries very fast. It looks like that is going to fit nicely on my page. And I'm gonna use my glue stick and just coat this down really well. Try to get a nice even layer so that there's no bumps and lumps on here. And if you do get a little lump, just rub it out with your hand and smooth it out. You're gonna flip this down on top of your calendar page. See, I got it back in the original spot, so that's good. Good thing about a glue stick is if you put it on there initially upside down, which I did do, and I had to take it off and put it back on, it very easily came away with no tearing, and then I placed it back down in the right position. You can use your hands to smooth it out. You can use a wooden ruler to smooth it out as well. This is what I always do. Rather than trimming, which is definitely an option for you, I'm using my sanding block and going around the edges and sanding off all the excess of my paper. This will give you a nice clean finished look. This is some rope that I got from Dollar Tree. I'm going to use this as a border and a hanger. I'm just getting a, an idea of how much I need here and then instead of using my scissors I used some of my pliers with a little cutting end. I cut that off with that because it's very thick. I put a clear mat underneath this so that I wouldn't damage my table and I'm using this glue. I used it initially on the sign and then on the rope to press it down. Then, because I like the look and it was so much more easy to handle just putting it onto the rope, because you can roll that under just a little bit, you can twist like you can see me doing with my right hand to put that in the right spot so that no glue pushes up to the top. It'll go, it'll sandwich it between the rope and the edge of the sign a little bit better. Now, Dollar Tree signs are a lot thinner than these signs that you get from Target. 
Mine was a thrifted sign. I paid very little for it. But if you have the opportunity to get maybe some 90% off items from the, the um, Bullseye's Playground, be sure that you check that stuff out because you can get some really quality signs, more, you know, more heavy duty for your projects um, at a very, very cheap price. Sometimes cheaper than a thrift store and definitely it's gonna be cheaper than the Dollar Tree if you do it that way. Okay, so I'm just gonna continue on here, adding a little to the rope, twisting it so that it tucks it that bead of glue right underneath the edge. And if you do get a little bit that peeks out on the top, just wipe that off. You can just use your protected finger and just, you know, rub that off of there before it gets a chance to dry because you don't want it to tear your paper. And then going around right up to that edge. The top part is not going to have any glue. So you see the glue did stick down to my mat, but it peels off the mat and it doesn't damage my table. I have got some spots on my table because I have a white, it's like a, just a regular, you know, card folding type table. And then I have contact paper on top of that. Well, this will stick to the contact paper and leave rough bumps and it's hard to get all of that off. So I guess it's a good thing that there's a rustic looking background because you really don't notice it, I don't think. Okay, so now we're at the top. We have our two loose strands. With this rope, there can be some little rough spots or, you know, spots that I just don't want in my rope, and you can just trim that off. So I'm going to make a simple knot here with this. You can see me roll it over and just tuck both the ends into the knot so that I have a little bit hanging out. Then you're just going to pull it some. See how tight this is and how well this holds? It could definitely hold a lot more weight than the weight of that little bitty sign. It gives it a nice rustic look too. So then I'm going to take this Dollar Tree ribbon. Very pretty ribbon. At one point they had run out and I was just devastated. So I did find another store that had restocked it. So maybe this is a, a spring and summer type ribbon. Just going to make a simple little bow there as you saw. I'm using it a little clamp in the center to hold it until I get the next layer ready. And I'm just measuring to see how big I want the loops of my bow to be. And then this is a simple bow. You're just going to wrap it around and around and around so that you have three loops on one side, three loops on the other side. No twisting required for this bow. Just go around and around and loop. And once you get what you need, go ahead and trim that off. Don't worry about your tails yet. And this is what our pretty little bow is going to look like. So we're going to add that right on top. Grab a little bit of floral wire or whatever you have to secure it with. Twist it tightly together. And once it's twisted tightly, don't clip off that wire yet because we're going to use that. <clears throat> okay, so then you're going to kind of get an idea. This is me looking to see, okay, the, the loops of the bow are the right size. It's how I want them. So I'm going to go ahead and trim off by dovetailing the ends of this ribbon. And I did leave one side longer than the other, which honestly I didn't notice until I was editing the video. But I'm, I'm not bothered by that. You know, in a cottage style, a farmhouse, rustic type look, it's, it's fine. You know, you're not going to notice or point that out. Well, I hope nobody comes in my house and dares to point out my mistakes. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> I'm from the South and we don't play that. Okay, so I'm going to take another piece here, make sure that my wires are one on each side, and I'm going to add down some glue. Careful not to burn yourself. I'm going to just kind of measure here to see how much I need, just to cover the back so that the little ends don't show. We want all the messiness on the back. You won't be able to see it. So I glued down now. Just gonna hold it in place. And then flip it over and fluff it out. Okay, so now here's where you put the wires. I'm going underneath the knot and around it. So right where they meet 
right where the two ropes meet underneath the knot is where you want to put it and twist it very tightly so that it doesn't slide around. You're going to fluff out your bow for the final time. I do this through the entire process. Trim up anything that needs to be trimmed, move anything that rounds that needs to be moved around, and then you have your perfect little simple easy to make sign. To me, I'm getting all the cottage feels, the springtime rustic farmhouse feels, and I just love it. Lemons are fresh, the yellow is bright and cheerful, and this is going to be living in my kitchen this spring and summer season. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching, and come back to see me soon. Bye!